Today's video is going to be on factors, factor pairs, and prime factorization. One thing you'd like to note first is the vocabulary. The word factors are numbers that are multiplied to, re to give a product. So for example, you might write factor times factor equals product. So in the problem, 7 times 3 equals 21. Both 7 and 3 are factors of 21. One of the things you'll be responsible to do on your homework is to find factors of numbers. There are many ways to do this. One of the most popular ways is the rainbow method. And the main reason we use the rainbow method is it keeps your factors in order. It tends to take up a lot of space in your work, so you may kind of adapt it as you go. First, I want to identify what numbers go into 36. And I start because I know all numbers include a factor 1 and itself. And I can make the arc like in a rainbow. I also know because it's even that 2 times 18 equals 36. I can do 3 times 12 equals 36. 4 times 9 equals 36, and 6 times 6 equals 36. You'll note I only included the factor 6 one time because that's one factor there. So there are a total of 9 factors for the number 36. You could do the same work without actually making the rainbow by just listing the numbers 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and 6. Now, with the number 24, we can make another rainbow method. So 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. Note the rainbow method is handy because you always know when you're finished because there's no other number. 5 doesn't go in there. And now I've reached right to 6. There's no reason to then do 6 times 4 because those factors are already listed. So the factors of 24, there are a total of 8 factors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. Sometimes we're asked to list factors as factor pairs, though, in which case the 1 and 24 go together. So the factor pairs would be 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. So be prepared if the directions on a question ask you to list the factor pairs to put them together rather than order from least to greatest. Factor pairs are helpful with doing prime factorization. Factor rainbows are great when doing greatest common factor because you want to have the factors in order from least to greatest. Some additional examples of factor pairs can be done with these three examples. And so I'm basically going to do the same thing the rainbow method had me doing, but I'm going to just list the factors in pairs right from the beginning. I know 1 and itself, 2 goes into 30 because it's even, 2 times 15, 3 goes into 30, 3 times 10, 4 does not go into 30, 5 times 6 goes into 30. And now I've reached the middle, and those are all the factor pairs of 30. For 40, 1 and itself, 2 goes into 40 because it's even, 2 times 20. 3 does not go into 40, but 4 times 10 sure does. 5 goes into 40, 5 times 8. But neither 6 or 7 go into 40. So those are all the factor pairs of 40. And the number 48, you'll note, 1 and 48. 2, because it's even, 3 times 24. 3, I know 3 goes into 48 because I'm going to use those divisibility rules we learned in the last unit. 4 plus 8 is 12, so that, no, that tells me that 3 definitely goes into 48. If I don't know the other number that goes with the factor pair, off in my margin, I'm going to go ahead and divide 48 by 3 to find out how many times it goes in. And sure enough, 16 times. So now I know 3 times 16 is 48. 4 times 12. 5 does not go into 48. 6 times 8, that's a basic fact. And then since 7 is the only number that comes between 6 and 8, I know that there are a total of 10 factors for 48, or 5 factor pairs. If we were in a situation of the number 36, like on the first example, 
you would list six times six as a factor pair. You would list six times six as a factor pair. Now we're going to continue with prime factorization. Now with prime factorization, we're going to break down the numbers in trees. So I want to find a factor pair that goes into 48. For example, I know that 2 times 24 is 48. I will circle the prime numbers and continue to break down my composite numbers. 24 can be broken down as 8 times 3. The 3 is prime, gets circled. The 8 we're going to break down further. 2 times 4. The 4 we're going to break down further. 2 times 2. So that leaves us with a total of 5 prime factors of 48, which would be listed in order from least to greatest. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And to make it even clearer, you could write it in exponential form, 2 to the 4th power times 3. I like to finalize my answer by placing it in a box because it separates it from all those circled numbers. Now I'd like to note that that's not the only way you could break down 48 because as you'll remember from the last example, there were actually five different factor pairs for 48. So I'm going to go with a different factor pair. I'm going to use 3 and 16 to break down my 48. And when I do that, you'll note that the 3 is prime, the 16 gets broken down into 4 times 4. I still have composite numbers here. And when I'm done, I'm going to have the exact same factors, same prime factors, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, written in exponential form, 2 to the 4th power times 3. So regardless of which factor pair you choose to use, you're still going to get the exact same answer. Now, another uh, thing you want to be aware of when doing your prime factorization is there are some checks to make sure you've done it correctly. And um, the easy check questions that I like to use are, do, do your branches actually end with berries? You'll see in this example that because all of the branches on my tree were circled, they're like the berries on the tree, like a factor tree with fruit. And so all of my branches must extend and either be broken down or be circled. So if all my branches end with berries, like in this example, I know that I've finished my tree. Now I've got to double check and make sure all my berries are prime numbers because if I do composite factorization, I won't be left with only prime numbers. So in this case, 3 and 2 are all prime numbers, so I know all my branches end with berries that are prime numbers. And finally, is the product of my berries the original number? In that situation, what I would actually do is multiply. 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 2 is 48. And that tells me that I definitely got this answer right. So these easy check questions, do your branches end with berries, are your berries prime, and is the product of your berries the original number, is a virtual guarantee. If you answer those questions correctly, your answer is going to be correct. I want to do a couple more examples just to model the process for prime factorization. 54, 6 times 9. Neither number is prime. We're going to break them both down. 2 times 3, 3 times 3. All of those numbers end up being prime numbers. So my answer will be 2 times 3 to the third power. Note that I continue to show my work and box my final answers, making it easy for you to know that it's done. If I use my easy check questions, all my branches end with berries, all my berries are prime. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, 27 times 2 is 54. I know I did it right. When I break down 100, 10 times 10, they're both composite. 2 times 5 and 2 times 5. Again, we're left with only prime numbers. 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 in exponential form. 2 to the second power times 5 to the second power. Again, box in my answer to make it very clear that's my final answer. If I multiply, first off, my branches do all end with berries. My berries are all prime. 2 times 5 is 10, times 2 is 20, times 5 is 100. I know my answer is correct. Two more examples. 36, we'll break it down as 6 times 6. Break it down as 2 times 3, 2 times 3. And again, we've got it in exponential form. 2 to the second power times 3 to the second power. And a double check, 2 times 3 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 3 is 36. Again, I know it's correct. In our final example, when I break this down, you'll note the very first factors I use are both prime. 
which means my prime factorization is done and my answer is not going to have any exponents. Nothing wrong with that. So in this lesson, we talked about factors, factor pairs, and prime factorization. Hopefully, watching this video helps you on your homework this evening. Good luck.